guys, it's Dan Sun here from Sun Bros, and it's time for another patch. So today we're going to be covering the newest patch notes that are going to be released at the beginning of the next uh, rank season. I'm here hanging out with Rogue. What's going on, Rogue? I'm doing good. What's up, YouTube? What's going on, guys? So we're going to um, we're going to go ahead and discuss all of the changes. We're going to um, discuss, you know, what they were before, what's changing, so you uh, know all the details of of what it all means. And we're also going to be giving rankings to we're going to be discussing what's above what's a buff what's a nerf and ranking how uh, much of an impact it's actually going to have on the game so we're going to go ahead and just head down the list and we're going to all knock it out in one video we'll see how long it takes um you know usually these take quite a while but we'll try to get done as fast as we can and uh, as entertaining as possible okay so uh blah 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 new patch notes okay <clears throat> uh rank, the first thing is rank optimization and they're going to be showing some images here of what that's going to look like so it's going to help you get to your kind of a, a fair ranking for you faster by uh, playing some placement matches. So it says added a new placement matches at the start of each season where tiers can be improved rapidly allowing players to quickly reach a tier appropriate to their ability. So uh, League of Legends has tiers uh, and the placement matches and tiers. So this is not uh, super uh, unfamiliar to MOBAs. So um, I think this is a pretty cool thing. It'll <clears throat> hopefully get rid of the uh, stagnant issue where like all the conquerors and masters and high diamonds are all like playing together constantly all the time and there's not enough diversity in rank to like have people playing you'll, you'll get stuck with people playing like against people who are way outside of their range it's a pretty common issue so like everyone ends up in gold and you end up playing against like you know you're you're a guy who finished plat four last season you end up playing against masters and conquerors which is ridiculous so this should help with some of those issues. That's actually a good improvement. What do you think about that, Rogue? Uh, I'm curious if it's actually if the, the placement matches has anything to do with casuals as well. If they're not, if you know what I mean, if you're going to be like a bronze, still be matches like randomly, like a <coughs> conqueror or something. Like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I was a bit out there, but like our goal with conqueror, or master, whatever. I don't you know what think I mean? this I, is okay, going to have anything to do with casuals. casuals. I think it's Dang. just. So if you see this images on the screen, I'm assuming you have it pulled up. It shows seven games. And it's set seven seven points there on the right image, and I think that you 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 go up and down based on your performance and based on wins and losses, and the more wins and the better performance, the higher up it goes and the higher you end up after placements. So at the end of those seven games, you get placed in a tier based on your performance in those seven games. Um, <clears throat> that's how it is in League of Legends, so I assume that's how it is here. What it also does is it adds a really interesting dynamic of uh, entertainment. I think for those first seven games, like they're vital. You know, it, it'll a lot will be determined on how high you have to actually rank up based on how you do in those seven matches. So we'll add some more information about that as we get it, but <clears throat> still interesting in the least. <clears throat> okay, so I'm then, curious, like, does that have to do with like, so like it's showing bronze, right? And you're gonna be in bronze or whatever for like those seven matches or something like that, like that or something like where it's showing. So like when you finish those seven matches, is it automatically you're gonna be able to rank up? like still like the normal way to like silver than gold or is it going to stick you straight in like a master or a diamond rank like how's that <clears throat> well you're I, I from i mean it's obviously in a different language but from what i would assume the lowest rank you can be placed in is bronze three maybe if you just lose all your matches all seven of them <clears throat> and the highest you can be placed is diamond three okay that's you see like the, you see the little like, lines the perforated lines at the bottom and the top so i think that's what yeah. it'll be like, and that's just like Diamond Three Three Stars. I don't really know for sure. I'm just guessing, but <clears throat> um, you have like essentially no rank. What it does is it's going to be placing you probably against people that were near the rank you were in last year or last season. Um, you're gonna play those seven it might matches. Do that. I was I was thinking maybe it was either gonna do that or it was gonna do like so if you got like three wins like in through those placement scrims if it's gonna face you with other people that have those three wins and then it's gonna see like from there you know what I mean? <clears throat> I mean there's there's a few different ways it could go as far as like taking care of that scenario. Any either way though it's it's a really interesting scenario and part of the game so I'm excited about that. Um, point two is new season challenges. Season rewards have been changed. Um, and then they reach a certain tier during a season to receive its corresponding. So they're just brand new, brand new rewards for ranking. Um, <clears throat> favorite hero statistics. The favorite page, favorites page can now show detailed statistics on the heroes you have used. That's interesting. I wonder if that'll be gold per minute, damage per minute. You know, those like those interesting statistics that they show in tournaments and stuff. Wouldn't that be awesome? 
Yeah, just more information in general would be nice. So then you can see like just what that person generally does. If they got like more MVPs or if they're, if they're a better player, yeah, even an MVP player. percentage or something, or how many MVPs in total games? I would love that. That would be so good. Yeah, <clears> see how <throat> well they farm and everything. Of course, that'd be statistics nice. make it a lot more fun. Like to like, okay, cool. I need to work on Wukong's goal per minute because it's way lower than the rest of my assassins in the jungle. It just adds a whole different dynamic. I'm really excited about that. Um, then we have. A uh, number of quick chat messages increased from 8 to 16. Makes communicating on the battlefield even easier, so that's cool. Um, then we have report feedback optimizations. Three report items have been added, and players can now report up to three times. Dang, okay. <coughs> Depending on what Receiving they're Receiving direct they're feedback doing. on the results page. Players with low credibility score will also be will also receive less brave points, gold, and experience. That's great. That's that's actually some additional. I mean, look, it's a step in the right direction. It isn't where it needs to be yet. Where like people who are really doing bad stuff are really getting punished, but that's a bigger punishment than before, and it's a step in the right direction. Right. So they're punishing more the people who are doing the wrong thing. So that it is it is definitely a positive thing for sure. <clears throat> then we have additional mute options, additional block options, stop annoying messages, message sound effects by muting sound notifications from messages from a player. They will still be able to. Uh, they will still be displayed on the UI, but will not play any sound. Okay. Interesting. Uh, added power requirements. Um, added a requirement where players must reach a certain uh, amount of power to be ranked in legendary ranking. Oh, uh -uh, interesting. That's just <coughs> that's like a little thing. It's a little tweak or whatever. I'm not even sure quite that what that means to be honest. Um, power requirements. So it's just gonna be harder to get legendary ranking with a particular uh, hero. Is that what it? Is that what I'm mentioning? Right. So instead of like they had it to where like if you just played. Like a certain amount of games, and you would be ranked in like the top 100 of the United States server. Now it's requiring a certain. You have to required to reach a certain amount of okay. points until you're able to place inside that like that top 100. Makes sense. Um, <clears throat> okay, then we have new user settings cloud. Save your settings to the cloud so that you can jump right back on into familiar settings after changing your device or reinstalling the game. Interesting. I like that. I do like yeah, that. That's, that's helpful. Um, Flexible idle, idle teammates. After ordering an idle teammate to remain at spring or follow me, you can change your mind at any time depending on the current situation. Oh, that's, that's great. Nice. <clears throat> uh, then we have new That's hero. actually really beneficial. So, actually, I, I want to add a little bit to that. That's actually pretty cool. So, if you have like a bot following you because they went AFK, whatever, which is yeah. obviously a bad thing, and they're, they're, they're playing like really forward, right? I, I'm assuming maybe at some point, if they're playing really forward, you could just tell them to back, and instead of them <clears> staying in the fight, maybe back so they won't feed the bot maybe that would be cool yeah that would be it's, it's, it's good regardless of, of how you look at it uh then we have the new hero cool. costume customizations you can now customize certain skids such as adding bunny ears or make your weapon deadlier looking for a look that belongs <laughs> to you and no one else that's interesting we'll have to see yeah, what that looks definitely. like when it comes into play but that hopefully actually good. hopefully they actually make it look good <clears throat> the bunny ear thing is kind of like just like a little cute thing for like whatever i mean it's it's yeah. whatever, but maybe Slims will get make some bunny ears. <laughs> uh, okay, number two, battlefield changes. Abyssal Dragon. We tweak the Abyssal Dragon's buff so that it remains relevant throughout, becoming a key resource that makes heroes more powerful for players to fight over. Wait, relevant throughout? Is that saying like as soon as you get like? Okay, tweak the Abyssal Dragon. Is it saying the regular dragon or the enhanced Abyssal Dragon? I'm not saying it's, it's not saying enhanced, so. Well, it has to be enhanced because there's no buff from the regular. Right. Yeah, there's dragon. no buff for, right, of course. So, so. <clears throat> oh, there's more, there's more, hold on, there's more to it. Get gold and XP for the match by killing the Abyssal Dragon. Heroes near the Abyssal Dragon, when it is killed, receive the new buff, Blood of the Dragon, which lasts for 90 seconds or until they die. Wow. Blood of the Dragon, 90 second duration, skills and normal attacks. Deal 180 plus 15 per level plus 0. Point, so a 40% AP scaling and a 70% AD scaling. Magic damage over three seconds when they hit an enemy. That's a lot of damage. So let me pull up the old calculator um, so I can get you guys a good idea of what that actually looks like. So we have uh, 15 per level. Let's stay your max level because um, that's what we normally go on. So 15 times 15 is 225 plus the 180. Um, so let's say we're playing an AD hero who has, let's just say 800 AD because that's a pretty solid number. Um, so 800 times 0 0.7, 560 plus 405. So you're talking about over a thousand, uh, or right under a thousand damage per hit. That's pretty solid. Seconds. 
Um, and honestly, you could get to 1,080. So you're talking about, you could potentially do 1,000 damage per hit. Now, <clears throat> it does pretty distinctly say Abyssal Dragon. Yeah, so it's, I it's, wonder it's, if it's, it's not going to be on Enhance. I think it, so, but you have to be nearby when it dies. Right, of course. You, so, like, if, if it's just those four people, the normal, which should be the four people, the ADC, the Mage, the Tank, and the Jungler on it, they'll all get the buff. Those four yeah. should be on it anyway. But if it's only, like, two people or just the Jungler there, then only the Jungler will get the buff. Either way, it's cool buff. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it applies to both the Abyssal and the Enrage or just the regular Abyssal. That, mean, that makes the Abyssal Dragon a much more potent. Now, obviously, we won't be getting 2,000 damage every hit. But... Um, you know, because you're early lower level, you're you're not level 15. You don't have nearly as much AD, but still, it's got to be a chunk. Um, so that's really interesting. And then, I do wonder whether that is for both dragons or not. Um, now, <clears throat> now there's a change to Dark Slayer. Either way, though, if it's just early dragon, that adds a a pretty heavy wrinkle to the early dragon and how much more important it is now. I mean, that's a huge benefit early game. So. It really is. Um, especially if it applies to, did it say? It says enemies. It doesn't say heroes. So, um, they could. it could potentially, like, greatly benefit the jungler. Maybe he can clear jungle a lot faster now because he's doing all this burn damage. Uh, we True. won't know for sure till that comes out, but it, that's how it reads to me because it doesn't, it says enemy and not enemy hero. Normally, they, they make a distinction. Okay, so here's interesting. Dark Slayer changes. Uh, we increased Darkseid's spawn rate in order to increase pushing and game pace into the late game, as well as address the issue of Drake being too weak in the late game. So, <clears throat> the Drake damage has been increased by 20%. I'm going to reverse order, sorry. Uh, so, our Dark Slayer starts at 7 minutes now instead of 8, which is awesome. And then it respawns every 3 minutes instead of every 5 minutes. So, that's just Dark Slayer's mm -hmm. a much more consistent thing. To okay, so here's another thing for Enraged Abyssal Dragon. So, that sounds like it's just for the Abyssal. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's 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 finish Dark Slayer. So Dark Slayer's gonna spawn earlier, it's gonna spawn more frequently, and the Drake's gonna be more powerful. So they're they're really which is great because you know what? A lot of teams don't focus the Dark Slayer and the and the Dragon enough. And this is gonna really make them a much more important target. I know that sounds silly to say, but you'd be surprised. Okay, so the Drake's getting a huge buff. Now we're on to the Enraged Abyssal Dragon. <clears throat> We wanted the enraged abyssal dragon to be neutral, a neutral resource with the ability to break stalemates in the end game. We have delayed its spawn and extended its buff time. Oh, so it doesn't start till level 15 now. That's great. That's so great, man. I really, really like that. I thought the 10 minute mark was too early. Um, I love yeah, me that. Too. Okay, so we have delayed its spawn and extended its buff time to allow it to make bigger impacts. Great. So when it spawns at 15 minutes now, forget the Dark Slayer. This is, see, that's, that's what happens. Like, at 10 minutes, you're kind of saying, okay, Dark Slayer better now, or is it Dragon? Now there's no question. At, from 7 to 15, Dark Slayer is the one to go for, for the end push, right? But at 15 minutes, everyone needs to be ready to get that Abyssal Dragon. It's a huge deal now. It's great. Um, as the Abyssal Dragon and its Enrage variant have different spawn times, we have tweaked their HP and attack to match the game pace and hero strength at different points in the game. Okay, so <clears throat> it spawns for the first time at 15 minutes and then it spawns every four minutes. And the, the buff lasts three minutes instead of 90 seconds. And then they, re they remove the Abyssal Curse. So I think that's the one where you get um, the n negated damage when you kill the other one, right? Right, right, right. That's really, really awesome changes. I'm, I'm actually super excited about all those right now. Like, I'm, as far as like the beginning of this patch goes, I've liked literally everything they've done so far. I think it's great for the game. Um, so I'm super excited right now. Uh, tower tweaks, gold. The, the tower gold reward has been has been decreased. That's interesting. That is interesting. It, I mean, so then the base abyssal. What's DRG gold? Abyssal dragon. Base abyssal dragon gold. Oh, yeah. That's been decreased. Um, the base that's has interesting. been. And the growth, 5%. It was 6.5% for 30 seconds and 5% for 30 seconds. So, okay. So, interesting. Um, the gold for the abyssal dragon has been decreased. So, the objective gold has been decreased across the board. 
That's interesting, because you know what it does. They, oh, okay, let's keep reading. So, they're lane tweaks here. The lane speed up starts at... So the lane speed up is being pushed back from 6 minutes to 10 minutes. Ooh, I don't... I don't know if I like that one. I do... I do. I mean, they're they're heavily making you focus on the dragon and Dark Slayer. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's it makes it a lot harder to push a lane. You know, at the six minute mark when the minions are still are still going slower. Um, enhanced melee unit starting HP is down. So the and then the enhanced melee unit starting gold is down. Enhanced melee units will no longer appear starting wave at ten. Okay, so interesting reduction in gold across the board. Uh, they they must be wanting these games to go a little bit longer uh, to the fifteen minute mark, where the the enhanced dark, uh, you know the the enraged abyssal can make a big difference. Yeah. Um, well, that's super interesting. And then okay, so the, I actually really like the next piece. So there's a new fog of war. We're gonna have to really get in game and see what these look like to really get a good idea of them. But I like everything so far. The, the 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 gold reduction one is interesting. I wonder what the intent is, but to me it seems like they probably want the games to go a little longer. Um, but but I'm not positive on that. Um, okay, so number six, new fog of war feature. Players' vision range is 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 represented as fog of war on the map, providing a deeper battlefield experience. So that's just cool. When you're yeah. looking at the mini map now, it'll show you what vision your teammates have. But it's not a permanent thing. It's something you decided to do. You can have it on or off. When oh, I'm going to want that on for sure. Yeah, me too. Because it shows me exactly what area of vision my teammates have so I know what is not being covered. Yep. So That's true. It's very bad. I hope they do it well, but if they do, it's going to be really good. Okay, now we're going to 3v3 mode tweaks. Core changes. Soul Taker. Killing a hero recovers 20% of max HP and 50% of max HP. That's a lot of HP. So was it 35% of max HP? Yeah. Oh, MP, MP. MP, I'm sorry. Second was MP. Oh, MP. Yes, man. I was okay, like, okay. wait, why is it on there twice? Yeah, I'm an idiot. Okay. Uh, number two, honorable Damn. battle. Uh, core receives absolute defense. When core HP goes below 20%, Resurrect all friendly heroes and add a shield equal to 30% of the max core HP, reducing damage taken by 70%. So, so it's just a little bit like That's insane. it's giving people like a comeback opportunity. This That's is just three, kind but this is just remember this is just three v three. Yeah, it's just three v three. Then uh, Garnak, tweak Garnak's kill buff. The three layers are now 20% attack speed, 50% damage reduction, 20% damage dealt. Okay. And then towers get additional damage reduction for three minutes. Added two mass healing runes and reduced heal with rough times. Okay, so they're trying to make the it's like trying to make the three v three game mode a little more competitive. All right, boys and girls, now we're on to the meaty part of the good stuff. The hero balance changes, and there's a lot of nerfs, some balances, and some buffs. Okay, so let's just take a quick peek at this image. Now we got Crixie, Violet. Um, Fennec, Valheim, Kilgroth, Lubu, Richter, Arduin, and Tara all getting buffs. I don't play any of those heroes. Oh, honest. they they changed it. That was last time I looked at it on the balance side. Richter was on the balance, so I guess they updated it. That's that's good because I was looking at it. I was like, that really looked like he was just getting a buff, not a balance change. So well, now they changed. <clears throat> he shouldn't be getting a buff though. That's lunacy. We'll yeah, it how, is lunacy. We'll see how because he's insane. Do. He's just annoying, and he's so freaking... Um, he's kind of a one-skill hero, but his skill's unstoppable. Um, okay, and then I nerfs, like the... Got it. Uh, so nerfs, we got Sephira. Um, so obviously, she's considered one of the most powerful heroes in the game right now. We have... Um, I'm drawing a blank on this. Dar uh, Darcy, he's obviously an insta-ban. That's Yorn, it looks like. Uh, that's all funny. Um, Elsu, Florentino, Quillen, Nakroth. I mean, all those nerfs make sense, except for Teamy. Teamy's really not a guy who would seemingly need nerfed. Then we have balance He's changes to nerfed every single time. Yeah, it's it's nuts. Uh, he's not that strong right now. Then we have nerfs to tool or balance changes to Tulum. 
uh, Jinnar and Vera. So let's take a look, starting with uh, your boy Tulin. And we shall go from there. Okay. <clears throat> They're changing Thunderclap, which is the passive. The base is going down from 320 to 270. So 50. And then the scaling is going from 52% to 60%. And the per level is going um, up from 40 to 44. So this again is another attempt to make Tulin less powerful early game and more powerful late game, which makes sense to be yep. honest. Tulin has a, yep. an issue late game um, with his damage, uh, and he's a little bit too strong. I leaned against a Tulin yesterday. He wasn't even any good. He just hit me with that passive, though, and it could get half my health down just instantly. So this makes sense. Um, then there's a, a balance change to Jinnar. Um, the passive meditation. Passive normal attack boost effect is not crit anymore. That's not... That's more of a nerf to me, but, but yeah, I was thinking. I was, I was curious to see what you had to say first, but it's definitely like a nerf because his passive could crit, and now it doesn't crit. So yeah, I mean, not that people bought crit on him before, but well, I, I had people talking about it the other day. I, I mean, I never built crit, but I had somebody saying something about doing like <coughs> one crit item before just to get that extra. So this damage is Crixie's big buff. She get her her base movement speed increase. Congrats, Crixie. At a girl. Um, okay, Safira. Skill one, the I mean that's a minimal nerf. Her her damage uh, scaling has gone from forty to thirty five percent, and the magic damage on the next normal attack has had a reduction, and it's from thirty percent to twenty seven percent. That's that's a minimal minimal nerf. Now now we're on to Darcy. Uh, okay, so this is the dimensional force passive. The recovery from normal attacks from six to five. Um, I'm trying to think of what Darcy's passive is. Isn't that the enhanced ability? Am I taking crazy pills? Well, yeah. So it's like when you when the, that little red bar fills up, you know what I mean, yeah. and then you can use your abilities again. So it's it's the recovery from normal attack attack is going from six to five. So is so that's actually that's increased, buff, is it not? Right? Yeah. That part is a buff. Yeah. And then the rest will be nerfed. Okay. Okay, first ability is... Wait. A buff. Oh, no, no, no. It's an early game buff, late game nerf. Huge, huge job. Bob. Okay, so that's 300 base to 330. So that's getting up. It's going from 70 per level to 80 per level. That's getting buffed. But the scaling is going from... Um, 80% is 50%. It's a big nerf. And the cooldown is going up. You know, the reason they did that was because they wanted him to be able to clear farm at a steady level still. And that helps That's him. true, but his his early game, if he hits you with that S1, oh my god, it chunks so hard. And now it's going to chunk even more, so it's kind of crazy. And then, you know, when the cooldowns have gone up early and then down late game. Which is... Yeah. Which is no, 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 up late game too, sorry. Half a yeah, well, yeah, it's it's up across the board, but it's like up less and less and less as you go. Yeah. So then we got skill two, dimensional cube. The base damage has gone down from 900 to 800, and then from 90 to, per level to 80 per level, but the scaling's gone up from 1.75 to 1.85. So that's less powerful early and more powerful late game, which... I think it's, I think it's less over, because it's 900, 800, a base overall. It's an 80 10 per level. Uh, you can easily get you can easily get um, So you're talking about it evens out late game because you can get 1500 AP on a full AP build and so um, When you take away 10% that's 15 that's 150 and that's actually what actually gets like removed a, I feel like it's an overall nerf and then late game it, it would be like the same as what it would no 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 It's be. actually an overall nerf because even then yeah. it, you're taking off um 250 total damage from the base numbers yeah it, even a with while. a 10 percent add you know you're gonna get to 1500 that's only 150 so you're gonna be 100 uh, damage less late game on that and then you're gonna be significantly less early game so yep then we got nice. yorn the hot shot they're changing the ultimate <laughs> oh we haven't rated cool. any of these nerfs or buffs whatever none of it nothing has been super significant at all nothing has been anything major whatsoever yet um, they're upping the cooldown of Yorn's ultimate, and they're they're having it a static max uh, mana cost, 
Violet's face movement speed is getting increased. Um, Fennec's base movement speed is getting increased. Valheim. There, so it's just passive. Um, let's see, we got the AD scaling is going up on all the passes. That's all the changing. Okay, so the A the A the uh, the basis AD across the board, ten per level across the board. Um, the AP is static across the board, not changing. It's just the AD scaling. It goes from one to one, to, so 100% to 115%, from 60 on the blue dart to 75, and then from 60 to 75 on the yellow dart. So simple, simple. Just a buff in the AD scaling of yours passing. Now we're going to Caffany. Is that a new hero that's coming out? Or am I taking yeah. Two? Okay. So Caffany's a new hero that's not out yet. So uh, I believe ADC. I believe she like shoots pretty fast, <laughs> like little bubbles. Well, or something. since we she don't know like what she does, we'll skip her and go to Elsa. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, skill two, the snipe. They have reduced the base damage at t t from 1050 early to a thousand, and then late game it's from 1800 to 1600, and they've reduced the AD scaling from 2.5 to 2.4. I mean, it's a real real small amount tweak the aim indicator so that it matches the actual effective area of the skill so what i do, do like a lot his nerf in the skill tree. okay go ahead sorry no go ahead uh, the nerf the, the the snipe nerf it's not significant i mean it, it'll it'll amount to like um maybe a total of 300 damage removed yeah so it's a nerf across the board but it's not too too big of a deal but his i like his skill three nerf we'll see we'll you'll see. see in a minute okay uh enemy movement speed slowed the slow is less which is crazy because if he hits you with that 20. you're pretty much dead you're pretty much dead because his auto attacks hit so hard yep um, definitely a big deal and then the own movement speed increase is reduced and the cooldown has been increased yeah i mean that's that's definitely a yeah. nice nerf so else who's getting under i mean i don't think it's gonna take elsu out of a top to your hero though i think it's just no of course balance not him a little bit more. i don't think i don't think he'll be i don't know if he'll still be like like god tier or whatever but he'll still be like up there for sure <clears throat> all right next we have kill Groth. attack speed increase from six to ten percent to eight to fourteen percent and then the skill two and rage spear the cooldown has been it's going to start at 12 so but it's going to decrease to 10 over the levels um at the end of the day this is what this means kill Groth still sucks okay because of this <laughs> one reason Kill Groth without healing is worthless, and if you buy one item on any of your main heroes, Kill Groth will not be able, his, his healing will be reduced by 50%, and it really neutralizes Kill Groth. That's why Kill Groth struggles. Now, you, you know, at platinum levels and below, you know, you might play against some people who don't even really even think about buying that item, but for the most part, at higher levels, people are going to think about buying that item when they have somebody like Kill Groth or Tara or Pyrrha or, or somebody who uses a lot of lifesteal. And they're gonna buy the item and they're gonna totally negate what you're doing. So, uh, next we're on to speaking of lifesteal whores, uh, Lubu. I like this buff in my <clears throat> uh, rank one. So, we're talking about skill one, rank one and two have faster movement speed and shorter recovery time. Now, that's the flip, right? Yeah, that's um, his, uh, his, yeah, his flip one and then flip two and then flip three. So, have faster movement speed and shorter recovery time. So, the, you can do the more frequent, like. In a faster amount of time, right? Is that what that's what I'm yep. saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. And then his ultimate immediately removes control effects on self and recovers 10% 10, 10 of HP lost. That's just oh, a straight yeah. buff. Okay, so. Yeah, I like. Does it not currently make him immune to crowd control? No, it doesn't make him immune. It just removes the cold contracts. Whoa, well, no, 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 no. I'm saying what he has currently. Lincoln. He currently doesn't have anything. He has no ability to remove crowd control right now. This is giving yeah, so right, him the ability to remove yeah. crowd control. That's a big deal. Right. It is a big deal. So it's like if he's in like an arm ult or whatever crowd control he's getting, whatever he's getting it, CC'd it won't work on arm ult. Let's be honest. It won't work on arm ult. I mean, it says immediately removes control effects. Yeah, on so does and Natalia's. So does a lot of heroes, and it doesn't work. Superman's removes, uh, Superman's 2 removes crowd control effects. It doesn't work against, none, none of them work against arm. Aram and Omen and Baldum and Roxy have the four um, crowd control effects that are un, un uh, counterable. Basically. Yes. So there might you be more. There might be more. Those are the four I thought of off the top of my head. Um, 
So th I'm sure it won't work on any of them, but still, it's still hella useful. And it, it's a big buff. I don't know that Lubu's gonna be like top tier or anything like that, but it definitely makes him stronger. Uh, and really, Lubu had become mostly irrelevant, so it's helpful for yeah. him. Um, so I'm curious to play him. I'm, I, I want to play him a little bit just to see like if it actually makes enough of a difference. I just want to play him just. To yeah, see. I mean, it's worth. I mean, it's a heal, and then you got the life steal buff. I mean, it's a nice change. Okay, then we got Florentino, his skill two, which is the okay true damage. See, for... real quick, I just want to add. This is the one where I was saying this is like not even hardly. Ner it's a nerf, but barely. Like he's still gonna be so strong. True Go damage for plus one percent of OCD. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one less percentage of true damage. That's it. That's yeah, all they did. It's insane. To... Okay. That's, uh, that's not going to be enough to, like, rain Florentino in. Next, we on to Richter. Um, they've given a... So, they've... The riverbed from movement speed boost increased by 20. Um, so let me real quick go to Richter and get a more solid idea of what he currently has so I can give you guys the best information as to how that's changing. So currently is passive. Um, so the increased movement speed in the river bed right now is 15%. So it's a 5% movement speed increase when he's in the river. Um, then we have the first skill. Reduce the hitbox size in brush form and re increase the hitbox size in riverbed form to match the visual effects. So that seems more like a, just a fix to a, a visual way, yeah. issue. Uh, and then the dash damage has been nerfed on both of those. Okay, so the first one is getting nerfed. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's getting nerfed. And then his second ability... Um, is getting buffed. The Definitely a buff. Getting, and the stun duration is getting increased. That's nuts, man. That doesn't even make yeah, sense. Nuts. That doesn't even make sense. Honestly. The se his second ability is the one that's broken. Yeah, that's the one they buffed. Wow, that seems just... That seems silly to me, honestly. That doesn't make any sense at all. All right, let's go to Viri's. That Viri's, that's just annoying, to, to be honest. I have really liked everything so far, except for that. That that was a little bit of a piss in my cheerios. Um, okay, now we're on to Virus. Uh, passive, Bloody Kiss. The damage has been reduced in the space from 320 to 250, and the per level has been increased from 20 to 25. The scaling is still 150%. Lifesteal on hit has been um, changed from a 12% static to an 8 to 15% scaling. And the max, the max life steal has been increased from 120% to 150%. And they fixed the bug where the life steal was not being affected by reduced healing. So that'll be, uh, that's just a balance slash nerf. Um, slash buff. To the life steal total, yeah, I guess. So, yep, max. that's about it. <clears throat> um, skill one, bloody fangs. Fix the aim indicator so that it matches the actual effective area of the skill. That's nice. It's just a little... Uh, okay, then we have the Serpent's Embrace. Okay, um, physical damage. Base increased from 80 to 100. The per level decreased from 35 to 30. And the AD scaling from 40% to 50%. And then... Definitely a buff. Definitely a buff. Uh, and then the ultimate Venom... The Serpent's Blood True Damage has been increased, right? No, no, okay, so the base is the same. The percentage is decreased from 12, 16, 20 to 12, 15, 18. So that's a nerf. Yeah, that's a nerf. That's the percentage of HP lost by the target, okay. Um, and then Physical Attack Boost when enraged has been decreased. So that's mostly a nerf for her. Interesting. Well they had her they had her in just the balance thing if I if I go back. Yeah, they just had her in the Yeah, but balance. it seems like most of her stuff was nerfs. True. So uh, okay then we got Arduin. Skill one ran physical damage to enemies uh, on lane. I like his buff. It's it makes a massive damage buff. 
yeah, 50 for sure. at level 1 and 150 at level 6. And the follow-up attack physical damage has been... It's the same thing, yeah. Same. Well, no, it's 0 at level 1. I'm sorry, the same one, though. The other one's the same. Though. 0 at level 1, up to 150 at level 6. They're both like that. Okay. Yep. Tar the Warhammer... Oh, this is in black. That's funny. This word is... Uh, <laughs> it's black. Um, okay, so Tar the Warhammer. We have the passive fighting spirit. Um... HP healed in three seconds. Six percent of of HP lost has changed to nine percent of HP lost. So the passive took a big buff. That's I mean it's a hundred fifty percent increase, man. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, it just makes her more annoying. I don't know if it makes her more useful. Her first ability, the slow effect. Uh, that's a big buff. This to me, this to me is insane. That to me is insane. Like it's gonna make her a lot more powerful early game. Straight from the get-go, she's slowing people for 60%. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a solid buff for Tara across the board. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's... those of you who follow the channel know I'm not a huge fan, so I think this is probably necessary. But I, again, I don't think it makes her more useful. I think it just makes her more annoying. So, pretty really much. To me. Um, next, we have Quillen. His first ability, the Mutilate, the, da the base damage is increased. It decreased. 15 at level 1 and decrease 15 so 15 across every level and the scaling is done is down 55% um, to 45% so that's a solid nerf yep um, you're talking about max level full build um, you're talking about 115 damage less which isn't a lot but it's something and then skill, skill two, 2 is the exact 10% decimate, it's 0 at level a 0 flat and then 10% scaling yep I mean, any reduction to Quillen's burst damage is a solid change. For sure. Um, he's I not... feel like he could use... I think that's that's a, that's a good change. I feel like like that might balance it a little bit better. He might need maybe a tiny bit more of a nerf, or like that might be good enough for him to where he's actually decent. I would like a smaller, a little bit of a bigger nerf on the damage, and then give him some more utility. Like, make the dash longer or something. Like, I don't want to make him useless. I just don't think his his burst is appropriate. He can... From Invis, he can one-shot somebody and then just go right back into Invis and never get caught. Like, yeah. That, yeah. You have to... Much. It's like there's not a potential for, like, retribution for the person. You, every hero can only be so powerful so that the other team has a, a opportunity to respond, even if it's just, like, minuscule opportunity. Against Quillen, he can kill you before you can even react to him. Because yeah. even if you see him coming, it doesn't matter. You can't attack a, 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 an invisible target like that. Um, all right, next we're on to Nakroth. <coughs> Skill two, death sentence. All of 1.2 AD component of sweet physical damage can crit. Now only 1.0 AD component of sweet. So that's just a that's a worthless change. I mean, it's it's a little bit of something I got. Barely. Timmy, his passive additional gold found has been reduced, and his first ability fix a bug where cooldown refunded under load under low charge was reduced okay that sounds like an, a buff to the to the bug fix so really all the changes were mostly minuscule pretty I good think. nothing really yeah, they were crazy um, the, I, I think in a more of a sense they were more kind of like balance changes not really like too much of like nerfs or too much of bust like they were yeah. so minuscule it was I, well, there were some people who needed to be nerfed, so that's kind of a bummer. It's people who needed to be buffed. Right? I like the ones I, I really liked though were Arduin and Lubu for sure. I think that they didn't do enough on. I really liked the game changes. I did not quite think the hero balance changes were appropriate. Um, Darcy should have been nerfed harder. Florentino should have been nerfed harder. Uh, the burst for, sure. for Quillen should have been nerfed harder. The overall sure. snipe damage should have been nerfed for. I like this ultimate They're nerf. Great. I think the ultimate nerf is appropriate. But I think the snipe damage needs to go down still. I, he can't be one shot in people late game. It's ridiculous. Plus, the Richter buff was insane. The Richter buff makes zero sense. They should have buffed other heroes that need to be buffed. Um, overall, I, I didn't like that balance, the hero balance changes, but I thought a lot of the other changes been. So now we're on to equipment tweaks. Um, purifying bracers can now be used while stunned. So that's the ability to remove all crowd control, right? Yes, I think I, I don't want to say that right now. I'm looking it up. Okay. Uh, here we go. 
Removes the control effect of one nearby ally. Also restores the... So, you can remove the... So, if you and a teammate get crowd control together, now you can uncrowd control him. Which is interesting. Yeah. Um, so, even though you are being stunned before, while you were being stunned, you couldn't do anything with your, like, your... That one ability, now you can still activate it on your ally and, and let him escape. Okay, so, Heart of Inc Incubus is a level... Tier, a tier 2 item. Um, and... That one is the one that builds into Mantle of Raw. So they, they've reduced the price and they reduced the armor. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, the, the, oh, you guys you're going to... You, this is, <clears throat> is going to kill you. The item changes are horrible, in my opinion. So Okay, so... Just damage per second increase cool. against minions and monsters per level has gone from 100 to 50%. So the ability for people who do burns on Mantle of Raw is reduced by half okay so let me think this through against here. minions and monsters against minions and monsters which makes the jungle uh, the jungling of heroes who do that a much harder job um yep. okay it won't affect and wonder woman so much but it'll mm -hmm. affect somebody like arthur who could potentially jungle it's not the other world okay so then mantle of raw as a whole the price is going down uh the components are changing the armor is going down to 200 the HP is going up to 1,000, uh, and then there's a new plus 60 HP. I'm assuming that's 60 HP um, uh, replenishing. So I think that's like 60 HP per second for five seconds, I assume. And they remove the attack. So this is becoming a straight tank item. So yep. all of the suckers who use it on Ari and everyone else, this is no longer an item for you. Uh, magic damage versus adjacent enemies per second. Um, so let me, this is, is going from 100 to 2% of your own max HP. That's why they're reducing it against minions and monsters, because that's going to be higher than 100. Yeah. A max build can get pretty beefy on the HP, on a high HP build. That'll be good for somebody like a tankier person with like Wonder Woman or Arthur or whatever. Well, any, all tanks should probably be using this item now because it would. This right. is a straight, straight damage. I mean, so it's just, it's just, yeah. Like Mina should be using it now because it's going to deal two percent. I mean, you're talking about ten. You know, you could easily get ten, fifteen thousand health. Let's say you have fifteen thousand health, and I'm pretty sure that's gettable. Um, two percent has three hundred damage a second. That's much higher than it was before. So it's, it's more damage now. And it's it's more tanky overall, I think. Super interesting. Yeah. I like that. Leviathan is... They took the HP off the Leviathan. Oh, the armor has gone up to 300. And they removed the HP. Whoa. That's, no HP at all. Yeah, but, but way more armor. That's a, not a bad trade-off, to be honest. You don't think so? No... Because if you're taking Leviathan, you're less likely to run into magic damage dealers early game. And it's your first item. You know what I'm saying? I don't have more armor yeah. than the seven, 750 HP is negligible. 200 extra armor early game? Think about, that's your first armor you're buying in the game. So you're talking about the biggest overall reduction to physical damage happening. You're tripling it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know that it, it, it gets lower the more armor you buy. So it's going to make you a lot more tanky against all physical damage dealers early game. A lot tankier. So that's a big buff to me. Um, so are you aware of the diminishing returns concept on armor? What, can you explain a little better? Yeah, so like uh, your first 100 armor, this is not exact numbers, this is an example. Your first 100 armor purchased will reduce, let's say, 15% of all physical damage incoming, right? Well, the next 100 will reduce like 12, and the next 100 will reduce like 10, the next 100 will reduce like 8. So the more armor you get, the less of an effect it has overall. Right. So early game, when you don't have very much armor, going from 100, a 15% reduction to 300, is is going from like a 15% reduction of damage against, fam against physical damage to going to like 30% damage. So it's like literally doubling... The amount of damage you're gonna take because the, the it, it actually it actually reduces faster than that but 
the first 300 armor is the most potent armor you're going to get in the game. So you're going to get that a lot faster now. It's worth more than HP is because now you're reducing incoming physical damage by a lot more at that first item time, which is like level 5 or 6. Um, so that's a big buff. The uh, Spear Longinus has been reduced by 50 gold. Hercules Madness. They changed the components. They added 30 more attack. They added more uh, armor. And they re removed the magic defense. And then, okay, this is a lot of crap. Hold on, okay. Um, <clears throat> so it's 80 gold more. And then they... Reduce the cooldown to 60 seconds. Okay, so let me go to the item in game so we can really get this down. Okay, so they've upped the attack, they've upped the armor, they took away the magic events altogether. Okay, and it didn't used to have 150, it used to have, you didn't have 120, it had 150. So that's that's just a typo, I'm sure. So, so it the, says either it's typo or it's still gonna have like random no, 30 no, magic. That wouldn't make any sense. It, I yeah, mean, it it's really possible. I think it's more likely to be. I mean, it could be a bit, but I think it's more likely a typo. Because having a random 30 magic defense on it makes no sense. They're trying to Ooh. make it. Uh, so the and unique just passive thought... now has oh gone from plus 40 attack to plus 20% lifesteal. So this item That's is a... becoming an item to be taken as a defensive item on damage dealers, warriors. And then the shield increase... So right now it increases damage, attack damage by 40%. 40%, for, or sorry, 40. 40 attack damage is nothing. It is, it is nothing, right? It's not that much. Um, but 20% lifesteal is, is something. And then you gain a shield That's a lot. for 8 seconds when HP falls below 40%. Now the shield increases 800 plus 80 per hero level. So that shield is going to be fat, man. It's a fat shield. So what that is, is that's a lifesaver. When that thing pops in a fight, you're you're gonna only yeah. you're gonna get a shield and you're gonna be able to regenerate your health while the shield is on and active. So that's actually a pretty decent. Change. And the cooldown is decreased to a minute. Which I one of the reasons I've always said Hercules Madness sucks is because the 90 cool second down. cooldown was too much. I said if it was 60 seconds or 30 seconds or 45, it would be much better. The essence of the wind, active skill speed up time from three seconds to two seconds. So essence of the wind is. Uh, the crap is this to the wind. Is that one of the support items? Yeah. Yes. You know, real quick, just to add on to something. I was hearing all the time. I never heard about it being a buff, but the way you explained it, like I was always hearing constantly about the mantle of Ron Levi thing always being a nerf, a nerf, a nerf, a nerf. What's going to be happening? But the way you explained it, I think it is actually a buff technically if you have them together. Because like the minions, like, they're specific. Oh, it's 100% buff. 100% buff. For specific heroes, like it's definitely four tanks, and it's not obviously. It's more so damage like now on the people who should take it. It's more damage. It's more tankiness. Early game. So I feel like it's a. I feel like it's a really good buff, honestly, to to Wonder Woman. To be it completely is. honest, it is. Um, Wonder Woman jungle, yeah. And she's gonna be honestly, it's silly. People might think it's silly, but this to me makes it more. Um, it just helps all together. Going up even in Dark Star lane against guys like Richter and stuff like that, the, the extra armor, I, I would take Leviathan still in lane. That, that crap is really powerful. Um, okay, so Essence of the Wind. Um, active skill speed up time. Essence of the Wind doesn't have a speed up time. I'm not sure what this is about. Essence of the Wind is the one that gives you a shield. Yes. So it the active is a shield. There's no speed up time. Active skill. Speed up time. Oh no no no! It is. It, I think because so it's like it's it's a it's a nerf. So like whenever you pop that shield on somebody, it increases their movement speed as well for like that three seconds. So now instead of for three seconds, it'll be they'll have an increased movement speed for uh, two it seconds. It doesn't say that. So I just I guess assumed I guess. Okay. Um, Ring of the Fiend. Don't read me. The only reason why I know that is because I played Thane the other day with the guys and everything, and yeah. I, I had that I had that specific item, and I was able to pop that, and like people would be moving a lot quicker with it. So this is another nerf: active skill, massive speed. So this is one that gives you increased movement speed to all allies within eight meters for, for by fifty percent for two seconds, and it gives the vision. Uh, fix the bug where the visual affected area and actual effective area didn't match, and then they 
the, the, the movement speed boost has gone down from 50 to 30 percent all right number six almost done folks we're on the last part here bug fixes and other tweaks tweak the aim indicator for various versus skill one and skill three so that it matches the actual affected area of the skill they actually they actually changed number two also they said that in the in the hero's note so all three of her abilities did. visuals are getting changed fix the bug where florentino's skill one cooldown reduction effect stacks when his skill two hits multiple enemies well, that might have been what makes him so potent in a 1v5 or 1v3 that might actually, would be that might actually be, be a real effective change against him well because the yeah Could his be. freaking stun comes up over and over again um tweaks the aim indicator on elsu's skill too so that it matches the actual effective area of the skill fix the bug where malik's regen effects sometimes do not stack when hitting multiple enemies while in enhancement area the enchantment is active updated the background stories for maganga mina and azinka on lower end machines the game will automatically switch to static login screens if it detects an issue playing back the login screen video and they fixed the bug in darcy's ultimate where an enemy hit by the ultimate cannot be pulled back normally <clears throat> okay oh so it, i wonder if that's thing fixed a bug in darcy's ultimate where an enemy hit by the ultimate cannot be pulled back normally so that, is that what we're saying like because like i would get ulted so ever since i've been, been playing rourke or florentino even when i was playing rourke if i had my ultimate up and he ulted me yes. i could walk out the ult and i would never get pulled back same with florentino if he was mid dash while the ult went off then he wouldn't get that because he's meter crowd control while he's dashing i think it's gonna so, force everyone to come back yeah yeah so it's like no matter what happens when you ult somebody and that you hit them with it they're going to come back no matter what now that's yeah. actually pretty cool that's pretty interesting all right guys that's the end of the patch notes. I hope you guys uh, learned some things about it. Thanks for watching. And as always, till next time. See you, YouTube.